Welcome to Ask the Expert North Texas here on News Radio 1080 KRLD. I'm David Rankin. And I'm Kristen Diaz. Hey, you guys, you know, we've been speaking about this now for the past couple of weeks because it's been kind of like one product rolling out after another. We uh, specifically talked about chat GPT and how artificial intelligence has been able to uh, create different answers and have different conversations um, with you, the, the user, uh, any, answering any kind of prompts you might have. Um, we've been able to see other companies uh, come out with their own AI representation. And now uh, something that our kids are probably using, it's Snapchat's version of AI. It's an AI chatbot tool that is supposed to be kind of like a virtual friend. And here to talk more about this is uh, Dr. Ken Jones. He's with uh, the Behavioral Health Division of Texas Health Behavioral Health Center. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, we just wanted to kind of pick your brain about this because um, it seems like we're rolling out AI quicker than any prob- anyone probably could have uh, predicted. It's kind of been there, but it's really getting a spotlight now, and especially with our kids. Right. How healthy is this for our kids' mental health to have a virtual friend? I certainly have a lot of concerns, as I know parents do across um, across the country as we're kind of looking at this. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them has to do with just the timing of it. Um, we've talked previously about coming out of um, out of the pandemic and, and the concerns that we have with our young people in terms of being able to form healthy social relationships and um, kind of the things that were pretty much on track before to some extent, with, um, despite social media's um, influence, but really have been exacerbated in terms of just being able to learn how to talk to each other, how to have an interaction, how to deal with the vulnerability of meeting someone new and and um, and starting a conversation. So here we have the um, the onset of this um, particular um, media tool and 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 the lack of controls and and um, filtering of the algorithms are certainly concerning. Uh, we've seen stories of uh, being able to have pretty inappropriate conversations with the chat PG, um, GPT figure um, apparatus. And, and it almost feels like they're testing it out on this population, on our young people. And that, that's really concerning. Yeah, there have been chat rooms available since the dawn of the internet where you could right. actually talk to other people. You never necessarily got to see them. The right. difference with this seems to be that it's artificial intelligence as opposed to real people that you might never get to see. It's, it's the whole basis of social media in some cases. Exactly. And so this is this is part of the difficulty, I believe, in terms of the seductive nature of this particular um, platform is that it's it's tricky because it's human enough to be able to gain your trust, but it's not human enough to be trustworthy. And in that space, we have lots of concerns, especially for um, kids who are lonely. And I, and I think a lot of the correlation between high utilization of social media and the basic and basic loneliness is a key factor right now. And so you have a vulnerable population who suddenly has the opportunity to have a digital friend that's available 24 seven. And one of the key things in normal social interactions is that we have this vulnerability in getting to meet somebody new, right? You don't know whether they're going to accept you, they're gonna reject you. That's just part of human connection when you when you meet somebody new. And this feature takes that kind of off the table, like it will be accepting. And so that vulnerability that we learn so much from and grow from is not, is not a factor. So no. it's easier to become, um, to enter into intimate types of conversations with um, this particular feature and have a sense of both safety and confidentiality, yeah. which is both concerning in terms of the speed with which these conversations can go from general conversation to intimate, more private topics, and then being subject to whatever the algorithm kicks back um, to your child, which as we've seen can be um, can be pretty inconsistent and sometimes you know, dangerous. You know, it's and, you know, other headlines in the news, we have, you know, some in some form of censorship or a limitation of what can be talked about, for example, in classrooms, um, in schools. 
Right. And uh, parents having their opinion on what they want their kids to know when, you know, right. what they want to have control over of how they have this certain type of conversation over a certain topic um, over a, a time that they feel is is right for their child. And with something like this, if a child's curiosity runs wild, they can ask anything under the gambit of what they feel like they wouldn't ask maybe a, a real person in their in their real life, you know, a family member, a, a, a trusted teacher, something of that sort. Right. And Kristen, that's, that's not probable. That's likely, mm -hmm. right? That's a likely outcome is, again, the safety of, you know, those factors I talked about. You don't have to be vulnerable in terms of going, what's my parent going to think if I ask them this question? What might that mean for um, our relationship or for my future freedoms, right? And we've all had to navigate those questions as far as when we talk to our parents. We're both asking something, but we're revealing something about where we are. And sometimes that can can kind of um, be a little bit dicey um, in that space. But it's still important to be able to, to learn those aspects of human interaction. And so, yes, this is a this is a shortcut to being able to bypass those types of natural learning factors and, and just go straight to the trusting relationship with artificial intelligence, which, um, as we talked about, I don't believe can be can be trusted in that space. Yeah, you said that it's human enough to gain your trust and not enough to be trustworthy. It's a fascinating quote. And the risk isn't necessarily just for children, though. It can also be risky for adults, because as we've seen throughout technology, we are the commodity. And yeah. questions that we ask, and especially if we go further in depth into a conversation with someone else, right? The company owns that AI, and they're gaining all kinds of information from us. Right. Yes. And that's that's that sense of confidentiality I was talking about. It feels confidential. Um, I think it also feels a little bit like therapy. It, it feels like it has that vulnerability to it. It has that sense of one on one. Um, and like I said, just that sense of being affirming so early in the relationship, it feels like there is a sense of unconditional positive regard, if you will, or unconditional acceptance that creates this desire to share deeply. And so with those aspects in play, like you said, it's also a data gathering machine at the highest level on the back end of that. And that combination is, is concerning. You know, whenever we kind of face these types of new technologies, especially with our young people, you know, uh, you know, the question ten tends to come, you know, well, what's what's wrong with it? Is there anything actually wrong with it? Can we prove that there's something um, negative about it? And I think we should be probably asking a different question. And that's what's right with it, because our, our young people are not struggling for entertainment. Right. Like, let's be honest, they're they're plenty entertained, perhaps over entertained. And so adding one more thing to their entertainment um, you know, menu is probably not the direction I would head as, as a parent. Um, I would probably look to kind of go, how can we um, get back to humanizing the interactions that we have? How can we make sure that our children are socially adept and able to, to gain the skills that are required to be successful in the real world? And this is not tending in that direction. So I think as, as things move on, we'll we'll find more hard evidence of the risk of this type of technology. But at the beginning, I would just ask the question, if I can't establish what's right with it, then perhaps I might want to look in going a different direction as a parent. Also, you know, this is for some people, it's it's been a positive experience where they have struggled with making connections in real life. This gives them mm -hmm. an outlet to feel seen or feel heard. Um, what can we talk about there with what's right, um, mm -hmm. with the positive side of, of kids having, uh, a, someone to actually just like a diary, if you will. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of diaries and journals, except for they don't talk back. So we don't have the concern of what a vulnerable child is receiving back in and how that's shaping their their thoughts and beliefs. Because um, we have seen that chat GPT, one of the problems was that it could be biased, right? It, sure. it, you know, it's getting algorithms from the internet and right. depending on what's on the internet, that shapes up what gives, what it computes. Right, exactly, exactly. And I just, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm sure technology will improve, but 
I don't know that I would ever find that to be a completely trusty, trustworthy uh, mechanism. You know, um, I mean, let's face it, when you see things, even when when Alexa or Siri came out, you know, a lot of people, especially young people, the first thing they did was try to figure out how to trick it, right? How to get it to say crazy off the wall things, right? Um, how to get it to give us attitude back. And so the, the very first thing is to press the edges of it and see what you get back. I expect the same thing with this technology. And so unfortunately, I think there's going to be questions about um, about suicide, questions about, um, you know, self-harm. And just to, you know, maybe for some kids, it's just to see what it says, or can I get it to say something wild so I can show my friends? But there's others that are going to be asking actual questions once that trust is established and what is it that that happens very un, unnatural at an unnatural speed but i think it's they're going to look to press the edges and see what the algorithm is going to kick back and for some kids they can handle it others i worry about at what point do you get the parents involved or that should parents take some responsibility for this thing because often all too often these days the babysitter is the tablet computer as opposed right. to human being and, and it it gives them a distraction so parents don't actually have to parent. Well, that's why I'm really excited that you guys are, are, are raising this topic because I think the awareness piece is really is really key. Um, it's hard to keep up with your kids these days, right? It's, it's hard to keep, um, keep up with the newest thing, but this is one of those that I think it is important, David, as you mentioned, for, uh, for parents to kind of be aware, you know, read what's out there as far as this technology. Um, I asked, I asked my kids a little bit older, um, they're in their 20s, but I asked them, I said, hey, so tell me about this, um, you know, this technology. And 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 um, the very first thing was like, dad, it's kind of creepy. I got to be honest. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, I don't mess with it. And, and that was that was their very first take. So so, yes, yeah, so I think it's really important for parents. It's worth the fight to stay up on what is influencing our kids to this degree and at this many hours a day. Right. Um, because if we're not on the front end of that. Um, you know, I, I think the consequences, you know, might be, um, you know, might not be good. So, so, yeah, I think it's important to take that approach to try to stay up on what's going on. And this is one of those factors that it's important to know more about. If chat GBT or snap, you know, chat bot wanted, uh, you know, more, what advice would you give these companies if they were to come to mental health uh, resources and experts like yourself? Well, there's a business side of this, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so it's, it's a challenge because I understand, you know, the, the desires to advance within the technology race. Um, at the same time, there's ethical and moral sides to this and a human side to this that I think, um, has to be factored in. So, it's not it's not about demonizing those companies or anything like that. I think it's just a, it's about being balanced in, in the approach. You know, what are the ethical guidelines that we need to to um, establish and follow as we look to advance what are really some pretty cool technologies? I mean, there's there's lots of potential for good and power for good, you know, in these technologies. But um, I think it takes a bit of caution and restraint as we look at how it impacts our most vulnerable members. Um, and we don't want to have a bad outcome along the way um, where we then all of a sudden start looking at perhaps putting guidelines in place. So I would challenge them to um, to self-regulate, to self-monitor um, and to put out um, products that can be trusted because trust is a currency in business as it is in relationships. And when that's violated, it hurts business as well. So. I would challenge them on that front to, to put out technologies with the kind of guidelines that allow them to establish trust with the consumer. Well, the Internet's kind of considered the Wild West. It still is. Yeah. At what point does government need to step in or does government need to step in? At the point where free enterprise fails to regulate itself, I think the government needs to step in. And we may be at that juncture right now with this product. That's Dr. Ken Jones with the Texas Health Behavior Health Center on today's Ask the Expert. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.